Hey y'all, I hope y'all don't mind me doing another cook with me. I want to prepare one of my favorite meals, falafels. I love Greek food. And back when I was a vegetarian, falafels were a staple of my diet. The place that I used to go to, it was 20 plus dollars for what I ordered. Even though I'm no longer a vegetarian, I still love falafels, so I wanted to make my own. And it's very simple and easy to do. So here are the ingredients. I have an onion and some garlic. I have some fresh dill, cilantro, and parsley. I also have some of these non, mini naans, which are like pita bread. I have salt, ground cumin, paprika, black pepper, breadcrumbs, baking soda, and then of course chickpeas. And I used a cup of dry chickpeas and soaked them for 24 hours. The main thing you'll need is a food processor. You can do this by hand, but of course it's gonna be a lot harder by hand. It'll take longer to do it by hand. Now this is my first time trying these, and so I did get some things wrong. So I'll make some alterations you'll see as I go. My purpose for cooking more at home is to still have the foods that I enjoy for a fraction of the cost. So I'm gonna keep experimenting until I learn how to make all the things that I would normally go out to eat at home. I started with one cup of dried chickpeas, but as you can see, they expand. So you gotta make sure you cover them with enough water. It expanded to almost four cups. I think I added about two cups of water. And again, I, I left it overnight, about 24 hours. I saved the water that I poured off the chickpeas to use in my garden. Now I drained the water off the chickpeas, but in the future, I'll let them sit and make sure the water is off them. This is the dill, cilantro, and parsley. I wanted to use fresh herbs, and this is why I'm definitely going to be growing my own herbs because I did not get very much in the package, and I do wind up adding more herbs later. I added about half a white onion and four garlic cloves. I was already above my max line, so I decided to blend it a little bit to get it a little bit lower. Now I'm going to add more of my dry ingredients, including cumin. It's only one teaspoon. Paprika, also one teaspoon. Salt, it's a fine sea salt, so only one fourth a teaspoon. Now back when I was a vegetarian, which was more than 10 years ago now, I switched to a vegetarian diet for ethical reasons because I didn't like the way the animals were being treated. Like I saw a bunch of doc documentaries, the ones I'm sure we've all seen, Earthlings on YouTube, and there are several on Netflix. But anyway, it was more about the ethical treatment of animals, and that's why now I choose cage-free and organic animal products. Now this wasn't looking very green, which falafels are known for being green. So I decided to add more herbs at this point. I only had dried herbs. These containers are slightly less than half a cup. So in total about one cup of cilantro and one cup of parsley. Now you don't want to over blend it, which is what I may have done. So I decided to go ahead and stop here and do the rest by hand. Now 
I'm going to add the final dry ingredients, which include baking soda. Half a teaspoon. And breadcrumbs. And I added two tablespoons. Next time I'll add three. I checked multiple recipes in advance and some people use chickpea flour and even regular flour. I decided to go with breadcrumbs. You can obviously do whatever you want. The best thing about this recipe for me is that it's all natural. Almost all of the ingredients can be grown in the garden. I use a deeper pan so that I can put more oil in to make sure that the patties wouldn't touch the bottom of the pan and I also use avocado oil. All right, so this is the final consistency of the mix. It's a little damp, but not too wet. It's very easy to shape in the palm of my hand. I prefer the flat patty shape for falafels. People also make them into like round balls. I prefer this shape. And they did stay in this shape. The only issues I had was if they touched the bottom of the pan because they could stick to the pan in that case. I did three of them just so I can go ahead and do those with you all. I found the best method was just to drop them by hand. And I preferred a flat spatula. Now these need to be cooked for a few minutes on each side. Now these are slightly touching the pan here, and that did cause them to stick a little bit, but it was an easy fix. So here is the final result. These made about 16 to 18 patties of varying size, but all pretty much palm size. I drove an hour and a half to Whole Foods to get the tzatziki sauce, which is absolutely necessary for falafels, for me at least. I'm definitely adding this to my list of things I need to make a homemade version of. <laughs> Falafels are good plain, on sandwiches, on salads. They're superior to any imitation meat I've ever tried. But you don't have to be a vegetarian to enjoy them. They're very filling and that's the main reason I like them as a vegetarian and why I still like them. This is the one I remembered. I forgot to add sesame seeds, so I am going to mix in some sesame seeds into the uh, remaining mixture. And this entire batch made about 16 to 18 palm sized patties. One serving size is about two to four. I just mix in some sesame seeds, but you can also sprinkle some on top of each patty before frying. And I almost forgot to show what they look like inside. The falafels are known for being green. And adding those extra herbs did make them greener. It looks a little wet, but the taste and texture feels the same as normal. 
So I cooked up the rest of the mix and I had about 17 total. And they're all about palm size. Some a little smaller, some a little bigger. There are some identifiable pieces in there. So I definitely needed to mix more or put less in the batch in my food processor. But overall, I think it turned out great. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching. Hope y'all tried and hope y'all like it too, if you do. Thanks for watching.